Hey guys, so I wanted to write a test for the function we made in the last video. And the way I wanted to do it was to create kind of a file here called create confirm email link dot spec dot typescript and then test it and make sure it works. And in doing this, I was like, hey, it would be nice to have the server started up so I can also check and make sure the link works. So then I was like, all right, ideally I don't want to run start server every time I run a test. I want to run this for before all my tests, so globally. So there is a way to do this with Jest, and that's what we're going to get to work today. So we're actually not going to be testing the email link, but we're going to be setting things up so we can test it in the future and write tests for pretty much everything and have the server start up only once per each test. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So to help us out with this, we had to do a global setup. And so this is something that runs once before Jest starts. And uh, here's how it's going to work. So here is an example that Jest has with Puppeteer. And the first thing is in our config for Jest, we are going to set up a global setup. And this is basically a file that gets run before everything else. So our Jest config is in package.json. So right here, and I'm just going to say global setup and I'm gonna have to create a file here. Now, you'll notice in the example they had over there, they have a setup.js. Now for us, we're using TypeScript. So I was like, all right, let's see if .ts works, and it did not work. Um, and I found actually an issue here where they talk about it um, to be able to work with the global setup with transforming, because some people use TypeScript. And it doesn't look like they have quite a change yet. Here's a dude talking 11 days ago about it. Um, but luckily, there is a workaround we can use right now. So we're going to create a file that basically calls our TypeScript file. So we're going to use this code right here. So before I do that, I do want to create kind of our, a folder for this. So I'm going to create a folder called test setup. And I don't know with folder names is if it's bad to do um, a camel case like that, but we'll leave it for now. And then I'm going to create um, setup.ts. So in here, what I want to do is pretty much just copy the register test, at least this beginner part here. And we're going to just put it over here. And we're going to grab that and just uh, import it. So then in our register over here, we will not need any of this. And we'll come back and fix the errors. Okay, so now that we have this set up, what's going to happen is we're going to copy this code here, and I'll explain how this works in just a second. And we'll say call setup.js. So this is going to be a JavaScript file. So here, I guess we're registering a TS node, and I guess that's what calls the TypeScript file. And then here is our module that we want to import. So the imp module we want to import is uh, setup. And this will be called setup. So really we want to, and I'm just going to oops, expand this or destructure it. So in setup over here, instead of before all, we're going to say const setup is equal to this async function and we're going to export it. So now we're going to export uh, this function here. And instead of setting get host, what I'm going to do is um, set this as an environment variable. So process.env and dot test host. So we don't need get host anymore. And I'm not to change in our other tests. I was using a function, but a string is just fine. And the reason why I'm doing process.env dot test host is this is going to run and this is going to be a global thing that we can access in our test. And that's what we're going to do. So then in call setup, we're importing that function. And again, this function didn't really change. We just start up the server, grab the address, and set the test host that people can access it from. And then call setup over here, we have that. And then we're just going to call that function. Oops. So call setup. And that's it. So in our package.json, we now call, we point it to the JavaScript file. So source 
dot slash source slash test setup slash call setup dot js. So now that function will run before all our tests. Um, before, um, if you just say before all on this test right here, it would only run before all the tests here. If I create another file with tests in it, it does not affect it at all. So each test file is kind of isolated. Um, by creating this, this is gonna run before everything, which is important. Um, and I'm gonna just find and replace right now. So right now we have a git host and we wanna replace it with, and we want quotation or parentheses around this. So everywhere we see git host, we wanna do process.env.testhost. And I'm also gonna say as string and replace all these. And the reason why I do as string, and just to show you guys the error, um, when using process.env, um, things can be undefined. So I know and I trust that I have this set. So to trust it, I just say as string and we're good. And now there's no more errors or anything in this file. We can go and run the test. And you're gonna see we're gonna get a few errors and I'll show you guys um, how we can solve each one of those. So I think the first one is just has trouble, um, yeah, so just has trouble compiling. And it says link is declared but value is never read. And if we take a look, here's the call stack. So source modules register resolver.ts. So register resolver. And we can see this is on line 66. So I can go to line 66 and we can see, hey look, our link is never read. So I can get rid of that and refresh. And now test again. And uh, it's gonna actually should now actually run the tests, but one test will not pass. And uh, we'll see that. And it should be the duplicate one, cool. So one passed three, uh, or sorry, three passed, one failed. So the one that failed was check for duplicate emails. Pretty weird, right? So let's see what's going on there. Um, and the reason for this is you'll notice with this test, we're doing one thing different. And that is actually accessing the database directly. Um, let's see, right here I'm accessing the database directly. Below here I am not accessing it directly at all. Um, and that's why that one fails. And the reason for it is we're not making a connection in this page anymore. And we can fix this by just saying for all. And we add a function, and I'm gonna say async, and I'm gonna say await create type form connection. So now we're gonna create a connection before all these tests and it'll go ahead and work. Now we could just create the connection for this one since that's the only test that needs it, but I think this is fine in case we add tests that need it. So now if I do yarn test, we'll go ahead and all the tests will pass. Um, so perfect. And now this sets us up for being able to do tests anywhere and uh, be able to use that same server. So in the next video, we'll, we'll go ahead and test our uh, new function that we made.